Now let's go ahead and start to set up Logic Pro. Here we're going to go through the most efficient way of setting up before we actually do start to make any music. To view and edit the preferences, we need to first go on Logic Pro 10, the top left of the corner, then go down to preferences. These settings will stay the same every time we open up Logic Pro. Let's first click on general. And under general, we have start up action. The default one is open most recent project. So it opens the last song that you used. It opens right where you saved it. This is the most common setting and it's great if you're just working on one song and you want to continue where you left off. There's also do nothing. This means it opens the project as it looks here. No option at the start. And below this is open existing project. This will give us a list of logic folders and you can find the project you want to work on. Then below this is create project from template. So you can look at some templates to create a project from. This can be great for starting the, so uh, starting the song off for certain ideas. Then there's create a new empty project. This one can be handy uh, if you're working in a session and you're recording different instruments on different days, for example. So day one, you're recording the drums and bass. Day two, the guitars and the pianos. You could have separate uh, folders for separate days as well. Okay, now let's click on editing. Here you can see number of undo steps. This is huge. It's for how many times you want to be able to undo. It actually allows us to go back to 200 steps. Now let's go along to audio. First box we have here says core audio. This is to enable the core audio driver, so make sure this box is checked. Next we have output devices and input devices. If you're using a sound card, click on the drop down menu here and choose your sound card. Logic will automatically read it and appear on the list. A sound card is needed if you're recording any external audio straight into your laptop, for example, a guitar or a microphone. If you're not using the sound card, then leave it on the settings, built-in output and built-in input. So going down, we have buffer size. This means the amount of CPU power needed to create these sample rates. So if you change the buffer size, you'll notice that resulting latency below will change. Latency refers to a short period of delay between when the audio signal goes in and out from the system. It's also measured in milliseconds. The higher the buffer size, the less audio latency you will get, but the more CPU or computer power is actually needed. If your computer is struggling, then maybe consider decreasing your buffer size. 128 buffer size is standard and fine to use. Obviously, increase this buffer size if you hear any latency when recording audio. Below this, we have the checkbox that says 24-bit recording. This is the bit rate for the recording. Let's leave it checked as we want to record in 24-bit. Below this is a checkbox that says software monitoring. This allows you to listen to the actual input signal. Let's leave this box checked as we want to hear the audio signal. The box below says input monitoring only for focus tracks and record enable tracks. This is when you want to record an audio instrument such as a guitar. You can hear it before you record it. So let's leave this box checked too. Under this, it says independent monitoring level for record enabled channel strips. This is for if you want to use these faders and logic to set the recording level. Leave this unchecked for now as these things we're not going to be going through in the introduction course. The same with the stuff below, it's not needed for this introduction course. It's mainly about the processing core. Let's leave it for now. Okay, let's go over to advanced tools. Make sure the show advanced tools box is checked. Going down, we're going to be working with audio, so make sure that this box is checked too. We're going to be working in stereo, so uncheck the surround box. Stereo is left and right monitoring, so your left and right speakers. Surround uses 5.1 surround system, which might be useful if you're composing for film music, or you want your music to be played at a cinema, or anywhere of a surround system. For this introduction course, however, we're going to be working just in stereo. Next one is MIDI. Click on that as we're going to be working in MIDI also. MIDI, if you didn't already know, stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI itself doesn't make music, but it sends out a series of messages that trigger our instruments to allow us to play music for our computers, for our software environment, or for external instruments such as a synthesizer. 
So carrying on, the next one is control surfaces. This allows us to change certain controls quickly and change parameters when working with software instruments. We don't need this check right now, however. And the next one is score. This is for score editing, which means digitally writing out sheet music. This is something we can work with if you're used to working with score types like Sibelius or Logic Pro's previous versions. This might be useful if you've got a classical music background or if you're used to reading and writing musical scores. We will not be using this in the introduction course, however, so make sure this box is unchecked. Next is advanced editing. We have a bunch of different things here. Let's go ahead and click on this. Okay, now it's closed preferences just for now. 